Hey there everyone, I'm Jordan at Afterburner Automation and today I'm going to give you a tour of the A360 control room so that you know where various features are located before you start building bots. If you'd like to follow along with me and you don't already have A360 set up on your machine, the previous course, Automation 360 Installation and Setup, will walk you through installing the free Community Edition on your workstation. Let's get started. We'll start by logging into the control room. If you set up Community Edition with me in the previous course, you'll go to the same URL you got in your confirmation email. If you're using the Enterprise Edition, then you'll have a custom URL that should have been provided to your organization by Automation Anywhere when they purchased the product. Once you get to that URL, enter your username and password and log in. When you log in, you'll see the Explore screen if you're using Community Edition, like me. Feel free to come back and explore this screen if you like at any time by clicking Explore on the left-hand sidebar. If you're using Enterprise Edition, you won't see this screen at all. Instead, you'll see the Home screen, which we'll navigate to now by clicking on Home on the left sidebar. The Home page is a landing page that has some basic information and links for you. Up on the top left, we could quickly get started building bots by clicking on Create a Bot. Click on that now. If we were ready to get started, we could give our new bot a name and a description and select where we want it to be stored. But for now, press Cancel and we'll look at the rest of the home page. You'll see on the top right that there's a Recently Visited Pages section. This section will have the five most recently visited pages so that you can quickly navigate back to where you were earlier if you lose your place. In the middle of the page is the Insights section, and this provides a quick link to Bot Insights, which we discussed in more detail in the Introduction to Automation 360 course. If we click that link, it'll take us to our dashboards, where there are some default dashboards already created. I'll go into more detail on how to use Bot Insights in a future learning track for business users, but for now, just know that we can create and define custom metrics within bots that can be tracked here. Let's close this tab and go back to the home page. At the bottom of this page, you'll see the My Metrics section. This area displays some statistics related to your username, like the number of bots you've built, the actions or commands that you use the most, the number of bots you've run, and the average time it takes all of the users in your organization to build a bot. For now, this section will probably be pretty empty for you, but over time, it's pretty neat to see these numbers grow and take a look at the commands you use the most. Next, let's roll over to the left sidebar and take a look at the other options. I'm going to skip over Discovery for now, because that'll also be in a future learning track for business users, but that's where Discovery Bot and or Fortress IQ are stored. It's possible that you don't see this option on the sidebar, and if that's the case, it's because either your organization didn't purchase Discovery Bot or Fortress IQ, or you don't have the proper permissions to view this section. Just know that this section is used for recording actions related to manual processes and then building a detailed process map. The next option on the sidebar is Automation, and when we click on that, we're taken where bots are stored once they're built. Right now this is pretty empty as you can see, but as you build bots, they'll start to show up in here. A quick note here, if you have Enterprise Edition, you'll see tabs for Public, Private, and Bot Store just below the word Automation here. I'll go over those in more detail in the Junior Developer and Control Room Administrator tracks, but if you want to follow along, click on Private, and your screen should match up pretty well with the rest of this course. Now, on the left, you can see the Folders section. No matter which version you're using and how many bots you have, the root folder here is called Bots. We can click on the little caret to the left of it to expand this folder and see what other folders are inside. So let's do that now. And we can also roll over to the right of each folder name to see options like Create, Edit, or Delete subfolder. If you don't see some or all of these options, it just means that you don't have permission to perform these actions. In the center of the page is the Files and Folders section, and this will show you all of the subfolders and bots within the currently selected folder. 
you can see in the folders section that bots is currently highlighted. So it's showing me the sample bots folder, which is the only thing in here right now. I can click on that folder to see what's inside of it, or I can click on it in the folders section to do the same thing. For now, let's go back to the bots folder by clicking bots in that folders section on the left. To the right of every single item in each folder, there will be three dots. If you hover over those dots, an option bar will appear with some context-sensitive options that you can use to edit, delete, copy, etc. for that item. Turning our attention to the top right corner of the automation screen, you'll also see some other options that you can use, such as Create New and Import Bots. If we click on Create New, you'll see that there's a couple of options here bot, form, and process. Bots are self-explanatory, but forms are interactive forms that you can use within bots to get user interactions, and processes are used to create process maps. If you're using Enterprise Edition and you have the permissions, you'll see export bots and run bot up here as well. I'll go over these two and the import bots option in future courses, but basically export allows you to download bots to a zip file and import bots allows you to import those zip files so that you can move your bots from one control room to another. Run bot allows you to set up a bot to run on a bot runner machine. Finally, just above the files and folders section, you'll see a search bar that you can use to quickly find certain bots within the current folder, if you have a lot of bots in there. You can search by name, status, or type to help narrow it down. You'll also see some icons just below the search bar on the right, which are used to perform some of the same actions, but also with options to filter what's shown in the files and folders section, and which columns you see in the table. Now that we know where bots are built and stored, let's take a look at the activity page by clicking on activity on the left sidebar. The activity section is used to monitor bots that are currently running or that have run in the past. You'll see a few options here like in progress, historical, and insights. Insights is another way to reach bot insight like we did from the home page, so I'll skip that for now. Let's click on in progress and see what's in there. The In Progress Activity screen shows all bots that are currently running on bot runners and bot creators. There will be different statuses like started or pending, the name of the bot, what device it's running on, and the username of the person who ran the bot. You can also use the search bar at the top to search through the In Progress Activity table for certain things by clicking on the drop down to the left. Using these options, you can filter by device, status, and more to find what you're looking for. Just below the search bar and to the right are some more icons that also allow you to export the table, refresh it, or customize what columns are seen. Now let's take a look at historical by clicking on historical in the left sidebar. I'll quickly move through this section because as you've probably already noticed, it looks identical to the in progress activity page. Literally, the only difference here is that historical activity is for bots that have already finished running, whether successfully or not. Let's turn our attention to the Manage section on the left sidebar. This area will typically be used by control room administrators, and I'll go into much more detail in that learning track, but we still have some use for this section as well. Click on Manage Now. Learning Instances will take us to the page for IQBot. Let's click on that now. IQBot is Automation Anywhere's intelligent document processing tool that you may or may not have access to if you're using Enterprise Edition. This section is out of scope for this course, but I'll be going over it in the business user's learning track at a future date. And before we move on to devices, if you're using Enterprise Edition, you may see some other options underneath Manage, like Scheduled and Event Triggers. Again, I'll be going over these sections in a future course, but those two can be used to manage when and how bots get executed, such as on a schedule or triggered when a certain event happens, like when you receive an email. Let's click on Devices on the left-hand sidebar. That'll take us to a page that shows all of the devices currently connected to this control room. If you're using Community Edition, you should only see your device here, along with a status of Connected, which matches the status we see on the bottom left-hand side of the page here. 
You can use this page to connect or disconnect devices from your control room or observe the status of various machines. The next item in the Manage section is Global Values. We're unable to create any with Community Edition, but these are basically custom variables that we can define that can be used in any bot. For example, if I wanted all bots to be able to access a certain email address, I could set that in here, and it would be available to all bots in the control room. The advantage of this is that if the email address changes, then we can change it in this one place here rather than changing it in every single bot that uses it. I'll go over that in more detail in the Control Room Administrator learning track along with the next two items. Credentials is the section that holds the credential vault. You can use this page to store sensitive information that can be used by bots without ever exposing it to anyone, including bot developers. Basically, once a credential or password is stored here, it can be used by the bot, but the person building the bot can't necessarily see it or access it. These credential variables can also be set to only be used with password fields, so that even when they're used to log into a system, the password only appears as asterisks or dots remaining secure. And then finally, we have the Packages section. This page shows all of the various A360 tools that are installed in our control room, along with their version numbers. This can be valuable to control room administrators especially, since they can quickly see here if the most recent version of a tool is installed. And last but not least, there's an Administration section on the left sidebar. Click on that now to open it up. If you're using Enterprise Edition, there should be a lot more options here, but since we're on Community Edition, we can only see Users. The Administration section is going to be used almost exclusively by Control Room Administrators to maintain your Control Room by issuing licenses and setting security permissions for different users. If I click on Users, I can see myself in the table here, and I can check what type of user I am, what roles and licenses I have, and when I last logged in. Users with proper permissions will have quite a few more options that I'll go over in the Control Room Administrator track. And that's it. Now you know the basics of the Control Room and where to find everything you'll need to work with A360. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. For more RPA training, check out the next video here, or watch everything in order right here. Subscribe to my channel for updates on new content, and become a patron to get access to personalized RPA support. But until next time, I'm Jordan at Afterburner Automation, and I hope this helps you build better bots.